So in today's class, let us discuss how customer line signaling is being made from the customer end. So generally, whenever a customer wants to make a call, so he starts sending some control signals for availability of connection. So what are the things that are involved? We will discuss under the heading customer line signaling. So in a local telephone network, so generally we make use of loop disconnect signaling. Whenever we are dealing with or whenever a customer wants to send call request signal as well as clear signals to the exchange. So this loop disconnect signaling is something like there exists a continuous loop from the customer end to the exchange. So and a continuous signal will be going on. That is what a continuous signal will be going on from the customer end to the exchange and again exchange to customer end. So this continuous signal will be disconnected, connected and disconnected. So we call it as mark and disconnect. We will discuss this in detail. So by doing such things, a particular information will be transmitted from the customer end to the exchange. Whenever we are dealing with a local exchange or any exchange, so there exists a minimum line current so that the exchange can detect. So beyond this minimum level of line current, if smaller line current is reaching, such line current will not be detected by the exchange. So if we are having a certain amount of minimum line current that need to be detected by the exchange, of course, we will be having its own relevant maximum permissible line resistance. So over line customer is sending some signal to the exchange. So the minimum line current this exchange should reach is fixed. If the minimum current is fixed then of course from customer end to the exchange a line is being drawn when signal is transmitted over this line. So this line offers certain amount of resistance. So we should have a particular maximum permissible line resistance if beyond this resistance happens if resistance between the customer end and the exchange if it is more then of course current is going to reduce. So current may decrease beyond minimum line current level. So in such case exchange will not be able to detect such signals or signaling signals. So this limits the maximum length of customer line and the size of the area served by the exchange. So we know if the distance from customer end to the exchange is too large then there will be maximum resistance will be available. So if it reaches beyond some permissible level, level of resistance so in such case the exchange cannot get required signals from the end user or customer with the help of customer line or subscriber line. So that clearly defines what should be the size of the areas covered by a particular exchange. It may be a local exchange or a, any exchange. So let us consider a scenario in which a customer line signal, how customer line signaling is transmitted with the help of a rotary dial telephone. So when we are using rotary dial telephone, so a customer sends address information by decadic pulsing. With the help of decadic pulsing, the customer is going to send address information. So something we call it as pulse dialing. So the signaling signal is sent from the transmitter end to the exchange in the form of a certain series of pulses, certain series of pulses. So depending upon what information we are sending, so that those many number of pulses will be sent to the exchange. So we call it as pulse dialing. So rotary dial telephone look like, so it look like this. When a customer holds a, a particular number and he rotates his up to this mark. So once he releases this, 
so a, a series of five different pulses will be transferred one after the other so five different pulses will be transferred from the customer end to the exchange so the exchange by listening to five different pulses so it, it detects dial number five is sent from the customer end similarly if he puts his finger on zero and again he rotates up to this end and once he releases 10 different pulses 10 different pulses will be transferred from customer end to the exchange part so we call such connections as make and break connections similarly if it is one if you release so only one pulse will be transferred from customer end to the exchange so for each digit what we are sending so the dial makes and breaks so the dial is going to make and break so once pulse becomes one or higher level so it so connection will be made and again break so that is how make and break method is used with respect to pulse dialing and the circuit is going to send a train of up to 10 loop disconnect pulses so as i said so loop disconnect pulsing is basically deals with makes and breaks so within a particular time duration let us say one second so for one second so it is possible to send approximately 10 pulses so as i said for zero 10 different pulses are transferred from the customer end to the exchange if it is one only one pulse will be sent from the customer end to the exchange within one second please note the exchange is able to detect the end of each and every pulse train because there exists a minimum pause between digits so once we send one signal or that is one number from the rotary dial telephone and from one to another number sending so there exists a minimum pause between digits and generally it is around 400 millisecond to 500 millisecond 500 millisecond is up is exactly 0.5 seconds so of course this this value is somewhat significantly longer than the makes and breaks that are occurring and makes and breaks that are occurring with respect to each and every pulse that we are transmitting is about is occurring about 33 millisecond which is somewhat small but when compared to this this value is larger pause between two different numbers transmitted from the customer end to the exchange so in the early days when we were using automatic stroger exchange so a relay circuit was used to receive these dial pulses transmitted from the customer end so in order to read those dial pulses so we were using relay circuits in order to so that is given for a very selector inside a stroger exchange so depending upon what number the exchange is receiving from the customer end depending upon that a particular route will be made by the stroger exchange however with the invention of registers so this reduces the number of dial pulse receivers that are required so so in dial pulse receivers we used to have relay circuits to receive dial pulses so but with the invention of registers so we completely eliminated this relay circuits in a stroger exchange so when we are using registers in place of relay circuits so this led to the introduction of push button telephones so this led to the introduction of push button telephones the telephones which we are using nowadays are something like push button telephones only so this is how a push button telephone would look like so when we press a particular number a certain signal will be sent so generally here we will be transmitting two different frequency signals one after the other for each and every 
digit that we are transmitting from the customer into the exchange. So this push button telephones are going to send voice frequency pulses. So it's going to make use of voice frequency pulses and thus provide faster signaling when compared to previous one that is rotary switch. That is when compared to rotary dial telephones push button telephones are much faster because in rotary dial telephones an exchange used to wait for 5 seconds for receiving 5 different signals for receiving 5 different numbers. So that was the case in rotary dial telephones whereas in case of push button telephones we re require very small duration to receive all 5 different numbers. A push button telephone make use of dual tone multi frequency signaling. So DTMF so DTMF is generally used again and again. So dual tone multi frequency signaling is used by push button telephones and it is going to send each digit by means of a combination of two frequency. So when you press a particular digit a combination of frequency will be sent one after the other. So generally two frequencies are associated with a particular digit. So for so that is from each of two groups. So we will be having two set of groups. So from these two groups corresponding to a particular number. So if I press 2 then 133 so 1336 hertz signal will be transferred from exchange from customer to exchange followed by 697 hertz signal so both signals one after the other will be sent so the exchange once receives these two signals so it understands digit 2 is been pressed from the customer end so generally two frequencies are used to reduce the risk of signal imitation. So signal imitation plays a very important role with respect to an exchange operation. So since these frequencies are not harmonically related, so these two frequencies are not harmonically related or these two set of frequencies, any, any of these, so they are not harmonically related. So there exists a much less chance of combination being produced by speech or room noise picked up by the telephone transmitter. So when we talk, so generally we don't generate, so when we are dealing with speech signals or room noise, so these signals are the probability of generating these two signals one after the other is very very less. So that's why we are using these two signals. So thus we are making use of non-harmonic signals for transmission of different digits. But if we have used only single frequency for transmitting a particular digit, so then uh, there are chances of generating that particular frequency when we are dealing with speech signals or room noise. Please note in addition to digits 1 to 0 that is 1 2 3 up to 9 after 0 so the telephone keypad has buttons with the symbols star and hash so you might have observed in this dial push button telephone set will be having star and hash along with digits 1 to 0 so these keypads star and hash are used by spc exchange for facilities that are under the control of customer. So a customer can make call diversion or the customer may block his incoming calls. So such facilities are available with the customer. So those in order to provide those facilities, we make use of these symbols star and hash. Let us consider one example in which a customer is going to divert all his incoming calls to another particular particular telephone number. So what he does is he press star 
followed by the intended another telephone so by the appropriate instruction digits so that is what after he press star he press the the number of to whom he wants to divert his incoming calls similarly if he wants to remove call diversion what he do is he will prefix this hash with respect to what the number he wants to remove from call diversion so you know to remove the call diversion he is going to instruct prefix by star in his keypad so that is what about customer line signaling is customer line signaling is basically deal with how we are transmitting signals from the customer end to the exchange in terms of control signals so we know different signals are transferred something like call request signal address signal or clear signal so so many different types of call customer line signalings are been made with the in case of particular telephone network so in our next lecture let us we will discuss about how audio frequency junction and trunk circuits are used inside a telephone system audio frequency junctions and trunk circuits are used Okay, thank you.